Good evening, YouTube. You guys are watching another segment of the Cali Effect King of Games. And today, you guys are going to be watching something really cool. Really, really cool. I love anime format. You're going to be watching Joey versus Kai. But now, these two decks are going to be built specifically through the anime. So if these decks were not played on the anime or the manga, then no, no cards are permitted outside of those realms. It's a really fun game to play. And if you guys want to see more videos like this, more anime format duels, go ahead and destroy that like button. Button. let's try to get to a hundred and fifty likes that's right 150 likes because it lets us as content creators know that you guys want to see more now if you guys get to 150 likes let's try to get more because again that's gonna let us know that we probably should be making more videos like this so the alligator sword is gonna be met with a spear dragon uh, destroying the monster and inflicting 400 points of damage as well as switching itself to defense position and then Kaiba is gonna go ahead and set a card face down wondering what that card could be and Joey's just probably wondering oh no well he actually has some cards himself marauding captain with a little wing guard the marauding captain is going to attack into the spear dragon and kaiba actually has a response this might be cool no it might not be anything so the spear dragon is going to go to the graveyard and then little wing guard is going to inflict 1400 of damage to kaiba now i'm going to obviously use joey and kaiba because it lets you understand a little more what's going on so dark or Paladin of White Dragon Ritual, White Dragon Ritual is going to be activated, tributing the Luster Pendulum, and then Shrink is going to be activated on the Paladin of White to stop the bottomless trap hole. Now that is just some epicness coming from the anime format. Now Paladin of White Dragon is going to activate its effect to spell summon Blue Eyes, White Dragon to the side of the field, a force to be reckoned with. That card is just freaking awesome 3000 attack 2500 defense a really hard card to get over and joey doesn't have any cards that are built to just head on take on the blue eyes white dragon it is one of the strongest cards in the anime so joey's gonna draw his card and yes he actually does the time wizard and he's gonna declare heads or tails flipping the coin and no he's gonna lose his monsters and take half of the damage to his life points that is nasty so unfortunately the blue eyes is gonna attack directly and joey's looking at a really really bad position uh kaiba only down 1400 life points but blue eyes white dragon is gonna go ahead and seal the game for game one this is a really exciting duel to watch and if you guys want to see more content like this go ahead and destroy that subscribe button actually blue eyes white dragon that subscribe button and then go ahead and red eyes black dragon that notification bell because yeah i said it we're just too strong if you guys want to see deck profiles then go ahead and check out uh, do that a little bit later. It's a little bit too much advertising. Joey's going to start off with a pot of greed and then summon the marauding captain to his side of the field. Is he going to follow up with a little wing guard as well? No, he's just going to summon the marauding captain in attack position and then follow up with a face down card as back row. Now, that face down card could be anything, but I'm betting that is a fairy box. And fairy box is an extremely powerful card for Joey. So Kaiba's going to start off with graceful charity, drawing three cards. And then discarding two cards. Now, those two cards might be Blue Eyes White Dragons because, again, that's probably one of the most useless cards. Yep, one of them being Blue Eyes White Dragon. It's one of the hardest cards to get off inside of the Kaiba deck because drawing them is kind of like uh, not really great. So, wondering what Kaiba is going to do this time around. Hopefully, to secure himself a game. It looks like he has a Vorse Raider in the Lord of D. He's going to summon the Vorse Raider to his side of the field. And he might be attacking that marauding captain. And it looks like Joey might have something up his sleeve the way that he touched his back row. For the people that don't know or don't understand, uh, as casual players, do not touch your face downs. Know what they are when you place them face down. And only activate them when you know your opponent's going to do something. Uh, unless you're trying to bluff them. But those aren't really good bluffs. Let's just put it that way. Um, so, Voice Raider is going to be summoned. And ironically, I think the bluff might have worked. Voice Raider might not be attacking that. That might be, I think that that's a really big mistake. At the worst case scenario, you lose your voice reader. Best case scenario, you give, let go of the Marauding Captain, but don't leave both of those monsters on the field. So yes, he's going to attack with the voice reader, bringing Joey down to 7,300, and then he's going to activate Pot of Greed, drawing two more additional cards from his deck to his hand. Kaiba is loaded with those pluses. And now it's back to Joey. Joey looking at a 1,900 behemoth of a monster. Voice reader is pretty strong inside of this format. Uh, 1900 attack is nothing to scuff at uh you know 
there's there's only so many good monsters and time wizard's gonna be summoned yet again is he gonna follow up with the time wizard play and is he gonna get it right no he's gonna set a card face down and that was pretty anticlimactic. he's gonna go ahead and pass his turn such what the what is going on dark hole okay so kaiba's gonna go ahead and dark hole a time wizard losing the voice raider and and really really banking on that trap card actually being something good he's gonna summon z metal tank and then possibly attack with the z metal tank and is there gonna be something yes he's gonna actually bottomless the z metal tank so i, I really don't understand what was kaiba's thought process to dark hole a time wizard but almost confirming that it is a fairy box face down is pretty crazy now joey looking to secure this game too not looking to get swept he's gonna activate harpy's feather duster and then monster reborn kaiba's own blue eyes white dragon now that must make kaiba extremely mad being attacked by his own blue eyes white dragon and that might just secure the game again blue eyes white dragon is a really really powerful card kaiba looking at his graveyard trying to prepare himself for another huge play Getting over his mo own monster might be a task, but that Harpy's Feather Dust and that Ring of Destruction was really, really good. So he's going to go ahead and normal summon the Kaiser Seahorse. Not necessarily sure why he wouldn't set the Kaiser Seahorse to his side of the field. Uh, but yeah, he's going to go ahead and normal summon the Kaiser Seahorse. And I'm not sure if he's going to follow up on any other play. He just might pass his turn. Or maybe he was trying to figure out another additional play. Possibly there is another play that he could do. And I'm not, again, I'm not 100% sure why Kaiba normal summoned the Kaiser Seahorse. But again, that's going to cost him some life points because he's just going to go ahead and pass his turn. Blue Eyes White Dragon, 3,000 attack, a deadly engine of destruction. Can completely wipe the board right now, destroying the Kaiser Seahorse and inflicting 1,300 of damage to the opponent. So uh, Joey thinking about what he's going to do with Kaiba's most prized possession. He's just going to go ahead and attack into the Kaiser Seahorse. Maybe Kaiba's like, you're so weak and pathetic. I can summon monsters and attack, and it wouldn't even matter, Joey, because you're trash. Well, he probably didn't say something like that, but I'm pretty sure it was amongst those lines. Joey's going to set two more back row, and yes, now Kaiba has the Chaos Emperor Dragon. Does Joey have a response for that? And the Fang of Critias. Why is he using both? Not 100% sure why he's using both, but he's going to use the Fang of Critias to summon Tyrant Burst Dragon to his side of the field. Now with two really good monsters on his side of the field, he can probably take care of the blue eyes white dragon i'm not sure why he wouldn't just use the chaos emperor dragon's effect because then that would essentially reset both of these guys' boards and put uh kaiba in a pretty bad situation so kaiba looking at uh you know what his cards are and yes i didn't know kaiba had an afro either or he was that dark skin but apparently in this universe he is so um <laughs> Tyrant Burst Dragon is a really good card. If I remember correctly, it allows him to equip to the Chaos Emperor Dragon. And now the Chaos Emperor Dragon gains attack and can attack twice. Not still, not 100% sure why he just didn't use the Chaos Emperor Dragon. But again, this just might be Kaiba's cockiness. Haha, <laughs> now I will destroy your own uh, Blue Eyes White Dragon with a creation of my own. And now he feels that he has protection through Lord of the Dragons, preventing his monsters from being targeted. But then again, Lord of the Dragons probably should have been summoned first to prevent his monsters from being targeted. Uh, no, it looks like he's going to take back or even read the Lord of Dragons himself. Yes, he was reading the Lord of Dragons. So maybe he didn't think of that plan all the way through. So I'm pretty sure Chaos Emperor Dragon can attack twice now. Big enough to attack over the Blue Eyes White Dragon and inflict some serious damage to the opponent. This is going to... Oh no, the attack is going to be declared and Fairy Box is going to be used. This can be a game ender. Is the Fairy Box going to get called right? Is it going to get called right? Right for the win, wrong for the loss. Is it called correctly? No, Skull Dice is going to be used anyways. What is going on? It was called correctly, but Skull Dice is going to be used. So as long as he rolls a correct... No, oh no, he's not going to use both. It, it looks like... It looks like Fairy Box might have called wrong. So anticlimactic, I swear, Joey. You are so freaking anticlimactic. It is not even funny. It looks like the Blue Eyes is going to get destroyed. Or the Chaos Emperor Dragon is going to get destroyed. And that is game. Because the Blue Eyes White Dragon all needs to do is attack over the Lord of Dragons. And yeah. Going into game three. Joey actually beat Kaiba. But it doesn't matter if Joey can't secure the match. You need to secure the match to be considered the true victor Kaiba. 
and or Joey. And Joey's Kaiba's gonna go first, activating Pot of Greed to draw two additional cards. My apology for the short confusion. Joey is the one that won the last match. Kaiba's the one that won the first match, and Kaiba is going first. He's gonna follow up with one back row and then pass his turn. Joey looking into what he can do. Seeing if he has uh, any good cards in his hand right now. I think I've seen a copycat card, which won't hurt him right now. Mainly because, uh, you know, Kaiba doesn't have any monsters to copycat to take advantage of. So Joey deciding on what he's going to do with his hand. And it looks like both of these contestants did not draw the perfect hand. And that just might be a little bit of a problem. Not a huge problem for us, or for, for them. Uh, but maybe a huge problem for us as viewers. So Baby Dragon is going to be summoned in attacking Kaiba directly with the Baby Dragon. It's a pretty decent guard. And I think, I think just right now, Kaiba might have gained... Just a little more respect for Joey. Yes, it is a pretty dumb looking card, but Joey has inflicted damage to Kaiba on three separate occasions and used the correct move to revive Kaiba's own blue eyes white dragon. Maybe more credit than I'm giving uh, Kaiba to, you know, like actually acknowledge Joey as a duelist. You know, he's a third rate duelist with a fourth rate deck. But Goblin Attack Force is going to attack. And he's going to destroy the Goblin Attack Force with Ring of Destruction, but take the Baby Dragon. This is putting Kaiba at a really big disadvantage. I think that that was, wasn't the best move because Goblin Attack Force could have been destroyed at any time, seeing that the monster was in defense position. Kaiba's going to... Uh, I'm lost. What's going on? What's going on? What is going on? Kaiba's going to set a monster in defense position? Maybe not. Maybe he's thinking if he should have set the monster in defense position. No, he's going to summon the Slate Warrior in attack position. An attack over the baby dragon, which is going to inflict 700 damage. That probably was a discrepancy between the two. Trying to figure out, I, keep in mind these guys are pretty new to Yu-Gi-Oh. I think they're doing a really good job, but I think uh, Kaiba thought that his Slate Warrior had to be set face down in defense position before he could flip it face up. Copycat's going to be summoned, copying the Slate Warrior's attack, making himself 1900, and then attacking into the Slate Warrior itself. Now, does Kaiba does have a response? Or maybe he's not attacking. No, he's going to activate tri Giant True Nade first. So two mistakes made by two players. And I think that they play fairly well into those mistakes. And those mistakes aren't completely terrible. So he's going to Giant True Nade and then attack with the Copycat. Getting rid of the Slate Warrior and then pass his turn. Kaiba's going to follow up with a monster in defensive position. Possibly, just possibly a Cyber Jar. I, I have a strong feeling that it's a Cyber Jar. And uh, I haven't seen this game in months. As you guys can see, we're not using the overhead view because this game came out before the overhead view was even made. So, yeah. <laughs> I just have a strong feeling knowing how the Kyber deck operates that that just happens to be a Cyber Jar. And uh, Joey thinking about his next play. Knowing that if that is a Cyber Jar, it's not much to do. Kyber's going to follow up with a Soggy the Dark Clown. Maybe Joey just doesn't have a, uh, uh, you know, response. And Saki the Dark Clown is going to get in for that damage. Inflicting 600 damage to Joey. He's going to activate Transmigration Prophecy. Summoning Lord of Red to his side of the field. Joey, you are such a savage. Summoning one of your most best cards to your side of the field. And it has some really interesting effects. When a monster effect is activated, he gets to destroy a monster. When a spell trap is, trap is activated, he's to destroy a spell or trap. So, that's going to talk to Saki the Dark Clown. Inflicting a lot of damage to Kaiba. Bringing him down to 1,500 life points. Now, I know Kaiba is probably thinking... This third-rate duelist might actually beat me, but how? But no, Cyber Jar is going to be flipped face up. How did I know? How did I know? And both players are going to draw five cards to the side of the field. Cyber Harpy Lady and Panther Warrior being summoned. And then for Kaiba, just Giant Germ to his side of the field. But a Blue Eyes White Dragon and a Flute of Summoning Dragon to his hand. So that might be pretty good. Not 100% sure why Giant Germ is summoned in attack position. But now Kaiba does have quite a bit of cards in his hand. And this could be a game in there. This could allow Kaiba to make some plays, some splash plays with all of those cards in his hand. Now, unfortunately, it did give Joey almost the exact same amount of cards. So it might not be as good for Joey as it is Kaiba because now Joey can also gain his normal draw. And uh, it's still Kaiba's turn. He flipped Summon Cyber Jar, so he can still Normal Summon and Special Summon. He's going to activate Monster Reborn. And an act of revenge is going to reward the Red Eyes Black Dragon. That is crazy. He's going to use the Red Eyes to attack into the Cyber Harpy Lady, knowing that the Panther Warrior needs to tribute a monster to be able to attack itself. 
So that is pretty freaking crazy. Kaiba special summoning the Red Eyes Black Dragon to his side of the field. Uh, the turn or the game after, you know, Joey special summoning the Blue Eyes White Dragon to his side of the field. I have to say it's mad respect. He's going to tribute the Giant Germ for Luster Dragon, which I felt he should have done uh, during his main phase. And he could have been able to attack over the Panther Warrior. But again, again, these guys are just new. They've just been reincarnated into two scrubs and they're trying to get back into the game to the best of the ability now joey looking at his hand trying to figure out what he can do that panther warrior on the side of the field could be a huge mistake but no he's just gonna summon two monsters in defense or two cards face down and then switches panther warrior to defense now if i know joey i'd probably bluff and keep the panther warrior monster in attack because i feel that joey would really fall for mythic box again whereas in defense I would attack with Mythic Box under Mythic Box as many times as possible, mainly because, again, it doesn't matter. You're only going to take damage. You're not going to lose any board presence, any monster presence. So, Kaiba looking at what he has. He's going to Heavy Storm. Oh, wow. That is crazy. Not that it mattered anyways, because Heavy Storm is going to be activated. Skull Knight is going to be activated, and he's going to roll a two. So, that would have sucked. But Heavy Storm is going to force... Uh, Kaiba to lose all of his back row, which is going to suck, but at the same time, Joey loses his back row, which could be pivotal. He's going to tackle both of his monsters, inflicting more damage to the opponent, bringing Joey down to 1,600 life points. Now, if he had a summonable monster, I think that would have been game, but I don't think he does have a summonable monster. He's going to tribute both his monsters from Blue Eyes White Dragon, the ultimate form of disrespect. He doesn't care that he could have had game with those two monsters. He wants to finish it off with his best card his favorite card and then that actually might be the demise of kaiba his huge huge ego tributing two monsters that did need to be tributed for one monster this isn't going to net you really anything other than swag points uh kaiba summoning blue eyes white dragon to a side of the field so monster reborn is going to be activated reborn the red eyes black dragon to his side of the field and uh i'm not 100 sure why he revived the red eyes uh maybe he has another plan in his uh back of his brain and hopefully it requires red eyes black dragon order to do this but until then i'm questioning the monster reborn on the red eyes black dragon and then question is going to be activated if you ask me i think the first monster in his graveyard was goblin attack force i don't even know if i got that right but i'm definitely gonna guess goblin attack force question what this card does is pretty amazing. Your opponent has to guess the first monster in your graveyard. And if they get it wrong, then they get it wrong. There's not much else you can do about that. Your opponent's just probably going to lose out on a good time. Basically, for you, it's a free special summon. If you play some deck like Light Sworn or something like that, it's not necessarily a terrible card. It's just not the best card in the world. But Question could be a really good card. So, looking at what he has, wondering if... He's going to call the card right. If he's going to call the card wrong, he's trying. I know he's trying to recall. And especially, I think the later in the games it gets, uh, the more powerful question is because all of the games start to get jumbled. You're like, God, what was the first card in his graveyard? He's going to call it and he called it wrong. I actually called it right. It was Goblin Attack Force, the first monster to hit the graveyard. So now he's going to tribute it for Jinzo and he's going to hope through Graceful Dice he'll bring it down by six. And no, it's a three. Ah. Uh. Blue Eyes White Dragon, 2,700 attack. So it looks like tributing both of those monsters actually came in grace for Kaiba because he would have been able to graceful dice them down and make his monster stronger than the graceful dice target. So that's pretty good. He needed to hit a six. And that was just that was just for him to attack over into one of the Blue Eyes. Kamikaze, one of the Blue Eyes, and then go for game. So Joey did have an opportunity at game. Blue Eyes White Dragon is going to attack into the Jinzo. And I'm not sure if there's much else that Joey could be doing. It's not looking great for Joey. He's going to lose his Jinzo to the Blue Eyes White Dragon. The Blue Eyes White Dragon is probably going to be the death of Mr. Wheeler. So Red Eyes Black Dragon is on the field still. And we can see that Kaiba does have a Lajin Mythical Genie of the Lamp. He's going to switch the Red Eyes and set two cards face down. So it really depends on what those face down cards are. That, you know, Kaiba could possibly go for game. I think he's going to go ahead and summon the Lajin and then just go for it. There's not really much else you can do except for try to inflict that damage and go for game. Those times, don't try to psych yourself out. Just...
do it. Literally, it's not really much else you can do. He's going to go ahead and summon the Lajin Mythical Genie of the Lamp. Joey's kind of bluffing. He's going to attack. And it looks like Kaiba's going to win the game. That is correct. Kaiba's going to win the game. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys want to see these deck profiles, check out my Patreon down below in the comments and uh, description. Please like, comment, subscribe. Shout out to all the guys that have supported my channel. But most of all, guys, enjoy.